Hi, my name is Sarah Mernon and I teach in the psychology department and I've been teaching the course Psychology of Women for 20 plus years. So what I'm going to talk about today is something that I would spend a lot more time on in my Psych of Women class. And what I'm going to talk about today is this idea that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. That is the title of a very extremely popular um, book that was written in 1992 by John Gray. And the fact that it's so popular reflects that our culture is very interested in this idea of gender difference. And the thing about this book and the whole industry that surrounds this book, there have been other books since then, is that it isn't filled with scientific evidence. In fact, John Gray um, has suspicious degrees um, throughout his career, including the fact that his PhD is from a non-accredited institution. And the book is filled with anecdotes and pseudoscience. Let me just give you one quick example. He writes, domestic routines like laundry, shopping, cooking, and cleaning are nurturing oxytocin-producing domestic tasks. Such chores, however, have an ill effect on men. For them, the priority is testosterone-producing tasks, for without the stimulating rush of that sex hormone, men become little better than limp rags. So the idea behind this book and many others is that women and men are so qualitatively different from one another that they shouldn't pretend you know, to, to have anything in common and they should stick to their gender roles. And this is problematic for several reasons. So I want to make four brief points um, in this really brief lecture. First of all, that the actual scientific data suggests that there's a lot more gender similarity than difference. Second, that even if there is a difference that's found, we don't really know what it means because gender is a very complex variable that can't be studied experimentally. Uh, third, that the alleged gender differences um, are interesting in that they support a, a patriarchal culture. So we need to look very closely at these alleged gender differences and what they mean. And fourth, that belief in gender differences supports the status quo. So it's easy to believe this. Um, there are lots of reasons people believe in the idea of gender difference, and I'll briefly go over some of those. First, I want to say that it's interesting to note that studying gender difference comes about at different points in history, particularly when um, you know, women are fighting for equal rights. So in the early 1900s, there was a flurry of research activity on gender difference. And since the 1970s, there's been a resurgence of this. Now, what's different about this round is that there has emerged a very strong feminist psychology to counter this. There was feminist psychology in the early 1900s, but it didn't have a big influence on what people believed. Um, feminist psychology is stronger today. There's also enough data that what we can do is look at this data, these data, and see, you know, over all the different studies that have been conducted, what, what do the data say? And a psychologist who's done this is Janet Hyde, and she has advanced the gender similarity hypothesis. When you look at all the studies that have been done on lots of different gender differences, what you find is a picture of similarity rather than difference. Most differences are either small in size, so this is a quantitative review, this meta-analysis, or they're not even statistically significant. The ones that are large tend to be things that have to do with physical um, capabilities like throwing velocity is a large gender difference. Um, when you look at behaviors, there don't tend to be very many large gender differences. Um, a couple of the larger ones that have been found are in the realm of sexuality though, which is an interesting one to look at. Some gender differences in the realm of sexuality are not large. But masturbation rates, there's a large difference. Guess who um, reports more masturbation? Um, and belief in the, or attitudes about casual sex is, is a large gender difference. But even things like physical aggression, for which we believe there to be large gender differences, that difference is only moderate in size. And what you can do with a meta-analysis is you can look across all the studies and see, well, where is their variation? You know, when people are being observed, you see a bigger gender difference. Okay. I'm already over four minutes, so let me uh, just say, so gender similarity seems to be the rule, but also finding a difference doesn't necessarily tell us why, because gender's complex. There are biological variables associated with gender, like testosterone levels and estrogen and possible brain differences, although not a lot of evidence of that, but there's lots of socio-cultural variables, and those are the ones I focus on in my research. Gender roles, we have clear expectations about how women and men should behave. 
And what we can do with a lot of these sociocultural variables is we can actually study them experimentally. We can manipulate some of these variables and see that they have an effect on behavior. There's so many examples of this. I'll give you one brief one. The idea of stereotype threat. There is a stereotype that women aren't good at math. And if you prime that stereotype before women take a math test, women who are, you know, have scored high on math achievement tests will actually underperform compared to women in a control group who, are, who aren't told that the test has anything to do with gender. So we have lots of examples where we can experimentally manipulate gender role um, stereotypes or expectations and see that they have an effect on behavior. Now, a point I wanted to make was that these gender differences are important because they have to do with power differences between women and men. This research, um, a lot of this is done by Lori Rudman, who's found that there are a lot of traits that are associated more with men than women that are also associated with high status people. Things like leadership ability, being competitive, having high self-esteem. And then there are a variety of traits more associated with women that are associated with low status to some extent. Um, being humble, emotional, caring for children. So we need to be suspicious of why these are the gender differences. Why we believe in gender differences? These differences, these, this idea of difference, I think most people know is heavily encouraged by the mass media and by cultural products. I mean, just look at Halloween costumes um, for boys and girls, which are very stereotyped today. There have been some points in time where they were you know, likely less stereotyped. So these are encouraged by the culture, and we have a natural tendency to categorize things. And because we mostly recognize two genders, it's a lot more complex than that, but because we think there are two genders, we categorize them as opposites. You know, um, if there are two children in a family, you might categorize them as opposites. We also learn these gender roles very early, um, and they tend to, that means that they tend to seem like they're natural to us. We internalize them. They tend to seem like they're real, um, actual differences. There's heterosexual inter interdependence between women and men. Men and women do want to get together. Um, some men and women do want to get together um, in a heterosexual way. And we've eroticized some of these gender differences in the realm of sexuality. So there's a heterosexual script that says men are, you know, the sexual initiators and women are the sexual objects. Now, um, you know, this is not as heavily pushed as it used to be in some respects, but it still exists. And so to be heterosexually successful, you have to buy into some of these things. Um, there are a lot of benefits to engaging in gender stereotyped consistent behavior, and people are punished uh, often when they behave in a way that's not stereotyped. Women taking on leadership roles uh, face certain pressures. Men wanting to appear modest or humble uh, might experience backlash. Finally, gender differences are legitimized by things like pseudoscience and often by science itself. Um, whenever we hear some biological explanation of something, you know, it sounds more scientific than some of the sociocultural um, research that I'm involved in that's very complicated and you have to you know read through the study very carefully to know everything that's being manipulated and take lots of things into account. It would be much simpler to say oh there's a hormone that causes that. Of course we don't have that research. Um, but I finally want to end with the fact that there are problems with this cultural emphasis on differences that are associated with power. Um, it reproduces a patriarchal society to believe this it also influences people's behavior at the individual level. There are problems for men associated with being hypermasculine. Um, sexual aggression against women is associated with hypermasculinity. Limited emotions, use of violence and alcohol to try to solve problems. There are problems similarly associated with hyperfemininity, lack of career ambition and advancement, preoccupation with appearance that can threaten well-being. Unequal relationships between women and men might perpetuate the status quo, but they aren't satisfying for women and men, we know that. And this heterosexual script that reinforces these gender difference beliefs um, is problematic for people who aren't heterosexual, it limits people's uh, behavior. So I think what we need to do is promote gender similarity and be aware of these cultural stereotypes about gender and, and critically evaluate them. Thank you.